to email and I will reply. Yes. You just send me questions and email it straight, but more clearly. Okay. Not Chinese. Uh, okay. All right. So today, I will first uh, I will finish up on what is called as radiationless transition, and then I will give a general lecture on what we need to be how to how it can be good to All right. You know, uh, so we talked about absorption, emission, and the other one is the energy transfer, electron transfer. These are, these are basically the four topics that we discussed. Okay. So, in addition to these things we talked about, there is one more uh, important phenomenon. That is called as radiationless transition. It means radiation less. That means no radiation. There is no emission of light. There is no absorption of light. It is involved in the process. But those processes are important because those sometimes they control the emission and the, uh, uh, the radiative processes. Okay. So let's see what is this one. Now this is the most, you know, this is the diagram which we talked about, what is called as Jablonski diagram. So the molecule in the ground state, that's where all the molecules are. When you have a molecule in, in, the, in the computer or in the bottle or in the uh, crystal, they are always here. But when you shine light, these uh, solid arrows, that represents radiating process. Radiating means light is involved. Okay. So to go from here to either here or to this one, you see this direct line. These lines represent the they absorb light from the light source or sun and then go to the excited state, S1, S2, like that. S1, S2 are the excited states. The electronic configuration is different from the ground state. So those states you can achieve only through radiative transitions. Okay. Now, from there, <coughs> the rules that govern whether the molecule will go from here to here or from here to here, it depends upon some selection rules. We talked about some selection rules, which is based on symmetry, which is based on the, orbit, the orbital overlap. Those things decide whether the molecule can reach this place or that place. So once it goes to any of these places, it, it will, this right here, this is again, this is a solid line, it tells you it will emit light. That is the, the light that it absorbs, it gives it away as light. So that's what we call as fluorescence. Okay. And also, the molecules, there is another corresponding triplet states for every electronic configuration where the, uh, two, uh, the two electrons are in two different orbitals, the two electrons have either opposite spin or they have the same spin. If they have opposite spin, it is singular. If they have the same spin, it is triplet. So every state will have, for example, S1, it will have T1 and S2, T2. Okay, so there is, what happens is, the triplet state going from S0 to T1, there is no solid line like this, there is no, no such line, because this is a spin forbidden transition. So the selection rules are, because they are, when they absorb the light, it has to change its spin going from here to here. So that is usually not possible. So you cannot produce the triplet by direct light of the On the other hand, if it is produced, then it will emit light. This is called as phosphorescence. Okay. So here, and then so one, two, three, four. These are all called radiative transitions. Radiative means somehow or other the light is involved. They either they absorb the light or they leave the light. Okay. And once in the excited state, they can absorb also. That is this process is here. Okay. 
these are these are all radiative but radiative means you put 100 kilo calories it goes here and then that 100 kilo calories comes out as light but molecules what they can do is to convert these 100 kilo calories into smaller pieces like 2 kilo calories 5 kilo calories like that and spend the whole energy and that energy will be just waste okay so those are called as radiationless transitions okay so okay. we look at here where okay, this is a swarm and then the line like this and line like this and going like all these lines which looks like this they are all plus not involve light so there is they are called as radiationless transitions that is going from here back to here it is it goes like this and a lot of small 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 lines here so so the energy goes into small small pieces and eventually they come down here so in the process every time it loses energy it will be 2 kilocalories 5 kilocalories like that so they are not useful they are basically it cannot be used for anything so that is what they are called as radiation less transitions but they are important because what happens is these processes which is radiative fluorescence it is always competing with radiation less transitions since radiation less transitions this one and this one they are competing you need to know a bit about this if this process is predominant then you will not see fluorescence if this process is not as important then you will see fluorescence same thing right for here so what is this radiation less transitions that is what we want to know okay now okay here so the ground state absorbs the light goes to the s1 ground state the s1 gives the light comes to s0 s1 comes to s0 gives the gives the energy as heat s1 goes to the t1 and then whatever is energy gap it gives out as heat that is this one okay and also after it goes to t1 it can come back to s0 either by emitting light or by giving out as heat okay on this one you tell me 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 which ones are radiative process radiative means the light is involved in this but which one part is okay which are the ones that involves light
So the most important radiation loss processes are 1, 2 and 3. Number 1 is competing with the emission. Number this one is competing with the emission, fluorescence, phosphorescence. These are not fluorescence and phosphorescence, but these are competing with the fluorescence and phosphorescence. Okay? And similarly, singlet going to the triplet, there is also go by heat. It, it, will, it will not go by light because that is the spin forbidden transitions. And this also is radiationless transitions. If you remember, going from S0 to T1 is not easy because it is a spin forbidden. Some we produce a triplet by energy transfer. That is by dextral energy transfer. We produce another molecule for the triplet state, it transfers energy to this. So the whether you will produce a triplet will depend upon these rate constants. This rate constants, see singlet, triplet. So it is called as inter-system crossing. There are two different spin states. So going from S1 to T1, inter-system crossing. T1 going to S0, it is called also inter-system crossing. You can always put T1 to S0. This is called as internal proportion. Okay, now, so we need to understand what is this radiation loss transitions, how you can control this stuff and all this. Okay, very, very important. It is not very useful, but although it is not very useful, we have to stop it. If you don't, you don't stop it, you don't get out of fluorescence in the compound. Okay, here. So here you can see the question. Why radiation less transitions are a matter? Because it is competed with fluorescence and phosphorescence. Okay. Now, it's just the same thing. This one and this one are not. So for example, from S1, molecule is coming to S0. So when it is coming, the most important process is fluorescence. Fluorescence is something that you can see. But if it goes as heat, you cannot see. So tell me, from fluorescence, what are the processes with which it is competing? Because competing means, if you know, if you are running, there are two other people. You no, know, you are going to be competing with two people. If they run faster, then you lose. If they run slow, then you are the winner. Okay. So tell me the fluorescence. Which two processes are with which it is competing? Or the, what are the two processes? This is the emission. Okay. You, we always want to have as much fluorescence as possible. We want fluorescence to win the race. Okay. If the other things are faster, then the fluorescence is looser. If the other two processes is slow, fluorescence is wins. Okay. So what are the two processes with which the fluorescence is competing? KIC and KST. KIC and KST. This one? And then? And the KST. Yeah. Okay. So the fluorescence, as you see here, it is coming down. And then the singlet is going to the triplet. This is what the singlet triplet crossing or intersystem crossing. And it also got the internal conversion. And tell me the triplet, what are the processes with which it is competing? So the triplet is phosphorescence is this. This phosphorescence is going to be competing with something. And if it is no competition, that is the only one. If the competition is there, then the phosphorescence is not that strong. What are the states in which it is competing? KST. Uh, KTS. Huh? KTS. Okay, so this is the one with which it is competing. What about this? No? Yes. Okay. Seven. This one? Yeah. Okay. So, to go from here back to this one, this one is lower in energy, this is higher in energy. So, to go from here to here, it requires energy. So, it is not going to go back. Unless it is closer to this. If it is, otherwise, see, singlet will come to the triplet, but the triplet will not go back to the singlet. Because this one is low, that's Okay. Now, 
if you want to say this is the fluorescence quantum wheel, fluorescence quantum wheel tells you when you excite a molecule, how, many, how much emission you will get. How much emission you will get depends upon the fluorescence rate constant divided by fluorescence <coughs> inter, inter system crossing that is this, internal conversion that is this, and all these three, see this one is competing with all these, on the other two. So that is what is going to happen. Sometimes what happens is there are chemical reactions and quenching, all these other things adds up. Okay. And the lifetime is also this. Okay. Okay. So the radiation less transition means the energy that you put as 100 kilocalories is going to come out in small pieces. 2, two kilocalories, 5 kilocalories, 10 kilocalories like that. So all the 100 will be gone. Okay. So the energy that we are putting in, it is coming out as vibrations. So the, the, the energy that we put in the molecule as light, it was used to track, take an electron from one orbital to a different orbital, that is electronic transitions, that is go from here to here. Now coming back from here, back to this one, what to happen is it can come like this, slow steps, you know, one by one, smaller, smaller steps and then come down. So, but something has to accept the energy. So there must be something else. If it is, if it is not able to get rid of the energy, 100 kilocalories will remain 100. So somehow it can give it to something else. So two kilocalories, that something else will get two, and this will be 98. And 98, 96, 94, like that is so. So the, what happens is the electronic energy will be converted into vibrational energy. Vibration is there are molecules, nuclear positions are vibrating. So if you put 100 kilocalories, if all of them goes into vibrations, then this vibration will become, you know, violently vibrate, and then it will slowly go down uh, with our solvent molecules and transfer the energy to the solvent. The solvent will also get hot. Okay. This is the process of radiation plus transitions. How fast it up uh, uh, take place? All these things depend upon some selection rules. So everything has a selection rule. Okay. So. Here. Do you remember this picture? Do you remember the picture? Okay. So every state is going to have something like this. This is the ground state. When we draw this sort of thing, we put the thing here. But that one actually looks like this. Okay. So when we draw a molecule, we draw like this. This is zero. So we say this is a zero. And then we say a swarm. This S0 actually corresponds to this place here. In fact, S0 looks like this. And then S1 looks like this. So each one of these things looks like that. So because this one represents the distance between two atoms. Okay. So this one is going to have a lot of vibration of ours. And same thing. Like that. So basically, when we go back and draw a diagram like this, when you put a line like this, that line actually corresponds to something like something like this. Each one has. So when you you should think immediately, the line is not really a line. It is like basically it's like a well, it's like a small well, and each of this well, there is a lot of vibration levels. This is called as vibration level. These are called as electronic law. Electronic means the electron is one orbital, and in the excited state, there are different orbitals. And these things are basically describing the positions of the two nuclei. So when you say it is here, it is something like this. When you say it is up here, it is a little bit more. And more, more, more. So, so this is going up. When you have two molecules standing like this, atoms, the energy is low. When you stretch it, energy increases. Stretch it more, energy goes up. So that's why the energy keeps increasing. Okay. <coughs> now, what happens is, as the energy, you can see here, these are all, these vibration levels are called a 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, like that. Like when we say electronic levels, we call them as S1, S2, S3, S4, like that. Vibrational levels, we call them as 
V0, V1, V2, V3, V4. It is the same thing, but it represents vibrations. Okay, now when you go here, suppose the molecule is going from this place to that place. Now what happens is that is now in a different vibration of the So in this case, the electronic configuration is there is one electron, both electrons are in the highest occupied orbital. In this state, one electron is in the highest occupied orbital, the other one is the lowest on occupied orbital. So this is a different electronic structure from this one. So when you change the electronic structure, the positions of nuclei will change. So for the original electronic configuration, this may be the preferred one. But when you take one electron from the lowest orbital to the highest orbital, the distance will change. Okay. And then you can have all this stuff. Now, what will happen is, this one is going to go on like this. And this, okay, so. Something else. Okay, now what happens, we look at here. When the molecule is excited, when it comes back to the lowest vibration of level, this level is somewhat equivalent to this level in the ground state. The exact, this is, let's say, this is 100 kilocalories. In the 100 kilocalories, if all remains on the molecule in the excited state, that will be in this electronic configuration. Suppose the electron wants to come back from the, high, high, the highest occupied orbital to the lower one. Now, if it changes from one orbit, the electron changes, the molecule will jump from here to here. But now, when it jumps, all the energy that you put in, it will end up in the vibrations. So, you can see this is. So once it happens with this moves from here to here, then it can slowly come down like a staircase. It just goes down and eventually it will end up here. This process is called as radiation-less transitions. Okay, whether how it will take place, whether it will take place, it depends upon a little bit more details. Okay, now you see here. We said this is the way the molecule is going to vibrate between this point and that point. And when it does vibrate between the points, the probability of finding the two atoms in that distance, it is covered by this curve here. So if I try to look at here. So this higher the peak, most of the time the molecule will be here. So smaller this peak, most of the time it will not, it will not be there. So how much of the time is going to be there, it depends upon uh, this uh, peak here. here. Look at this. These are the two places, the molecule will be here, the vibration level 1. And if you go to vibration level 2, most of the time it will be here and here and here. So, although the lines are drawn like this, it doesn't mean they are the two atoms will have equal distribution from this to this, 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 and all, all those places. So, it will have some, most of the time, Depending upon which vibration level it is, okay, that will be here, here, and here, 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 here. It depends upon this particular picture here. Okay. Tell me, for example, this is vibration level V is equal to zero. That is the lowest vibration level. So what we say is, in the lowest vibration level, the two atoms are between 2.5 and 3.5. Okay, let's say it is 2.5. This is 2.5. It is 3.5. So the molecule is vibrating between 2.5, 3.5, 2.5, keeps going back and forth. So how much time it spends, oh, when is it 2.5, when is it 3.5, how long is 2.5, how long is 3.5, it depends upon this particular curve here. Okay? This is a lot of, a little bit more maths, a little bit more physics. We don't need to know all this. So here, if you notice, the end points are 2.5 and 3.5. So this is middle point is something like 3. So if you notice, most of the time, the molecule will be somewhere here, 3. three. That's what we call as the bond distance. When you look at the bond distance between carbon, hydrogen, and carbon, carbon, the textbook, they will give you some number. That number corresponds to this place. Okay. So what happens is the molecule is vibrating this keeps going back and forth like this. When it is 3, most of the time it will be slow. When it is 
going in the middle, it will go slow, or the end, it will go faster. So that is the way things like a train. By the time, you know, when it comes to the station, it comes slow. When it is in the middle of the station, it goes, the speed is like 300 miles, you know, the, the new fast trains. Towards the end of the station, it will come very slow. But once it leaves the station, it will go faster. And then it will come slow down the gate. So what happens is, depending upon the, this one, the, 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 depending on the line, that's what you will have. Okay? There is one more thing that you need to know. See here, this is the lowest vibration law. The probability of finding the two atoms in the lowest vibration level is here. And as you go up, you can see it looks the number V is equal to 2. So it is the third vibration level. Probability is maximum is here, here, and here. But all these are not equal. So as you go up, this what happens is you can see the most of the time it is going to be at the end a little bit to the middle. So you don't ask me how it happens. So what happens is when the distance is larger, it will most of the time it will be vibrating at the two ends. It will not be going like this. Because most of the time, if you notice, the probability, this does see the probability. See that it goes like this. It's something that you sort of, you know, you don't need to know the details, uh, but it is something useful to know. So here, the vibration of our low, first one, second one, third one, fourth one, fifth one, tell me whether or the distance between each one of them is exactly the same are different. Okay, so for example, you take this. <coughs> Tell me that the distance between here, 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 are they same or different in this one? Different. Different. This one. Okay. This distance, this distance, this distance, this distance are the same or different? Same. Same. Okay. This is what is called as harmonic oscillator. But the molecules, they look like this, but they are not exactly like this. They look more like this. Tell me whether here, the distance between these vibrational levels, are they same or different? Different. Different. Okay. So here, you can see, more slowly decreases. Okay. So what happens is, when you have this staircase, the beginning, it is this distance is small. You go down and down and down. It gets large, the between the two steps is get bigger and bigger and bigger. So when you start, you just go like this. Wrap towards the end, you just have to really jump up uh, here. This is also important. So, so you can see here towards the as the line as the line goes up. By the time it comes here, it's more like this. And as it comes down, we are going to get a gap in the okay. larger. These are something somewhat important. Okay. This is something to remember. Okay. This will come back to decide when we decide how fast the radiation must transitions, this picture is important. Okay, now. So uh, this is the beginning, and then you go from here to here. Remember this? From here, you don't go here. From here, you go up. Tell me what is the uh, why the molecule. This is the S0. This is S1. You don't go from here to here. It always goes, when you absorb the light, it goes up. You know the, what is the root for the, what is the name of the root? Transitions. 
So if there is no radiation of transition, now the molecule that goes here, it will get stuck here. It will not be able to come to this place. So it will convert this electronic energy into vibrational energy. That conversion is called as radiation loss taxation. So if you have $100 and you want to change into smaller $5 bills, you go to the bank or some shop, ask the guy for, he will give you a lot of small changes. You can spend money like that. Okay. So, this is the excited state, that is this one. This one is this one. This is the S0, this is the S, S1. Now, the molecule, after it comes back here, it comes to this place, that is this one. Now, if it wants to convert this energy into electronic energy, into vibrational energy, now it is going to go into from here, you know, it has to go here. It cannot only come from this place to that place. So at the time of transition from electronic to vibrational, the energy level will exactly match. For example, if you look at this, this level is some, some vibration level in the ground state, and this level is the, ground, the vibration level in the excited state. If you notice, the excited state, this particular line, corresponds to P is equal to zero. That is the level. After you put the molecule here, it will wait for some and comes to say stay here. After it stays here, it is thinking whether how to go back to the ground state. When it is thinking, it, is, it can get go back either by emitting light or by changing the energy in something else. If it wants to say change in something else, it will have to go exactly for if you give hundred dollars, you should get hundred dollars back. You cannot just get twenty-five dollars. That means you are losing money. So what will happen is it, from this particular state. It will, uh, it will go over to corresponding vibrational level in the ground state. But once it goes here, then you can see it just keeps coming down in smaller steps. Okay. So that, whether it will happen or not, it depends upon the, like, the probability distribution I showed you before. Mm -hmm. So if you go back to the most previous slide, so we said, for example, mm -hmm. this is the way the molecules are distributed at various levels. And if you go back to the end, the higher vibrational levels in the ground state, the probability of finding the molecule is at the end, and it is not in the middle. The more higher the probability, faster the rate of radiation loss transitions. So this molecule, for example, so the probability in the ground state is like this. Probability in the excited state is like this. So the overlap is small. So what will happen is the transition from V is equal to zero to V is equal to whatever number is here is going to be not that good. So the, the, the gap gets larger and larger and larger. The probability of this overlapping with the corresponding vibration level will get smaller. So when you have to convert hundred dollars into radiation less transitions, it is less probable compared to converting $50 into radiation loss transitions, compared to $25 into It is much easier if you go to your bank, tell him I want change for $100. Then you say no. Then you ask him whether you have change for $25. Okay, you have it. So the gap is important. Larger the gap, slower the rate of radiation loss transitions. Smaller the gap, faster the rate. Now, tell me if you have fluorescence, from a compound. The gap is 100 kilocalories, another one 25 kilocalories, which one will emit more? Okay, understood the question? Okay, the more important, the more important thing to be part of the number is the overlap of this V is equal to zero in the excited state. And whatever number in the V is equal to zero in the ground state, that should get good overlap. The poor overlap means the conversion from electronic to vibrational is going to be less probable. So now, if gap is 25, another molecule gap is 100, 
which one is likely to emit fluorescence more strongly? The one with the 25 or the one with the 100? Okay, which one? You have discussed a little bit. Huh? You, also, you discussed which uh, one? I was thinking maybe if the gap is uh, big. Huh? Uh, when the gap is big, the uh, the floor uh, the fluorescence is strong. Strong. Yeah. Okay. Good. Mm. Okay. So what? So when the gap is large, that is, this one is over here, or uh, when this one is here, the gap from here to here is 25. Suppose it is over here, the gap is 100. Larger the gap, the slower the radiation loss transitions. Because the radiative transition is competing with the radiation loss. This is the, so the larger the gap means the guy is running very slow. So the emission can, you can, you can see the emission uh, strongly. Okay, so this one, the picture depends upon how these two, two surfaces are matching. Sometimes we don't know exactly how it is going to be. Often times, you know, there's a lot of guess. So here, the other, how do you know it's like this? It could be like this. And, you know, something like this. Uh, so it all this Here, see, this is called as the two surfaces. If they look, they are parallel to each other. And if these two surfaces, if you look, it is shifted towards one side. When it is shifted towards one side, what happens is the higher vibrational levels, the probability of finding the molecule is closer to the end compared to the middle. If you again go back to this whole diagram, see here. If you go to the higher level, the probability is more towards the end compared to the middle. Whereas at the lower level, it is the middle. So here when it goes to the end, at the higher level, this molecule that is going to be better over the under those conditions, the gap may not make much difference. Only when the <coughs> two uh, diagrams are <coughs> parallel like this, the larger gap the, radi uh, the lower the radiation loss transitions. Okay, so this one is the most important conclusion out of all this stuff. This is what is the basis of Kasha's rule. I don't know whether you remember Kasha's rule. Okay, so, okay, so this is, you can see here, when this thing is like this or like that. So these are called as matching, this is called as crossing. That is, the two surfaces, they cross each other. And here, Excited state surface, narrow state surface, they don't cross. They just look two things are one on top of each other. Whereas this one is shifted towards this side. That what, what it means is when you transfer an electron from the ground state to the excited state, the distance between these is suddenly increased to large distance because that is probably makes this, this bond very weak. Okay, that's what happens. Now, Okay, <coughs> so here, the same, same thing. See, this is the S1, this is the T1. So, this is the absorption and this is the emission. Okay, both are S1, sorry, this is not the uh, interpreter. So, this one goes up and then it uh, undergoes radiation of transition, comes back here and it emits light. Okay, and then this is going to be competing with the radiation less. Transition, since both are similar, it is called as internal conversion. Okay. What does exactly radiation loss trans transition mean? You know, the molecule has you put 100 kilocalories into the molecule with the light. The molecule has got all the 100 kilocalories. It has not gone anywhere. <coughs> the one way is 
it keeps all the 100 kilo calories for itself and then uses the same energy to go back to the, change the electronic configuration from the original back to the uh, <coughs> ground state. The other possibility is to put all the energy into the nuclear vibration. That means, <coughs> so for example, you take a carbonyl compound, right? <coughs> so when you have a carbonyl compound, C double bond O, at the very beginning, we talked about it has got two excited states, N to pi star, pi to pi star. So when you shine light on this compound, the electron from the n orbital goes to the pi star, so that will be singlet n to pi star excited state. The two electrons are in two different orbitals. Now, what can happen is after it goes over there, if the n electron comes back to the ground state, now the molecule has got 100 kilocalories that you put in, it still has the energy. That energy will be transferred to the carbon oxygen vibrations. So the carbon oxygen bond, which was double bond, now it will start going on very crazy. So it will be vibrating very violently, but still it has got all the 100 kilocalories. But if the, somehow the 100 kilocalories disappears, then the molecule will come down. Okay? So this is what happens here. So this molecule is <coughs> very excited, it is called as electronic to vibrational transfer. So first thing is energy will go to carbon oxygen bond, and then the energy will go into the carbon hydrogen bond, and then so these bonds will vibrate, and finally what the these energies, see this molecule has got 100 kilocalories to get started. That 100 kilocalories was transferred from the electronic to vibration. Now the same 100 kilocalories is transferred to other bonds in the molecule. For example, if you take benzene, CCX6. So when you excite an electron, it goes from FOMO to LUMO. It uses the 100 kilocalories. Now that 100 kilo, the LUMO electron wants to come back to the HOMO. So now it has got 100 kilocalories with it. So what will happen is that 100 kilocalories will be transferred to the carbon carbon double bonds. Now the double bonds have got 100 kilocalories. They are moving around faster. So now the hydrogens which are sitting, sitting around the hydrogen, carbon hydrogen bond, so energy will go into those things. So slowly the 100 kilocalories Also start moving around, so the energy will be transferred from the this molecule to the solvent. There are millions of molecules of solvent. So 100 kilocalories that we put in, now it is gone into one one kilocalorie into one solvent molecule. So there is there's nothing left. So the 100 kilocalories will be completely gone. Okay, but now there is no fluorescence because the fluorescence. If you want to emit fluorescence, you need all the 100 kilocalories in this carbon-oxygen bond. That carbon-oxygen bond has given away its energy to everywhere. Now, that is process is called as the radiation loss transitions. In principle, if you measure the temperature of the solution, it should get slightly warmer, hot. Okay. But it seems, you know, the we are using, so eventually everything will go into the all over the building. Okay, this is the process called radiation loss transitions. And do you have any questions? Question. Do you understand what is radiation loss transitions? How many people understand? How many people understand? Nobody. You want if one person says they understood, I will I will go home happily tomorrow. Otherwise, you know, okay. I went to CR and saw Muslim Street. That's all I did for the second. How many people understand what is radiation loss transitions? I should start. 
start all over. Okay, basically radiation does transition. We put the sun a light, it goes into the molecule, that molecule transfers all the light energy into vibrations. And the vibration transferred into the various rotations of the solvent molecules, so everything is gone. Okay? That is, that is called as radiation dust transitions. That one is competing with the radiative transitions. What we look at is radiative transitions. Radiation dust transitions, <coughs> you, can, you, cannot, uh, you cannot look at uh, uh, by emission or any other means. Okay? So now, yes, one, same thing, for example, this is a single state, and then you have a triple state. Why tell me the red, red thing is lower than the green one? There are three colors violet, red, green. Okay. Why the violet is all the way down, the red is a little bit above, and then green is slightly above red. Why? Okay. I will leave you at the same place where I started. It looks like maybe you didn't. Why this red one? is lower in energy compared to this green one. The red one is triplet. It is triplet. A triplet, yeah. Yeah. Triplet. Okay. So the, this is triplet and this is singlet and this is ground state. So basically S0, S1, T1. Right. So the triplet is always lower in energy than the S1. So if S1, this molecule cannot absorb the light and goes to the triplet. That is a spin forbidden process. So it will absorb the light and goes to the S1. From the S1, it will undergo inconsistent crossing and come to the triplet and then from there it will eventually come here. So the energy that you put it goes here and then from there it goes to the small small piece and eventually it comes at this place. From where it will emit light or it will undergo radiation rust transitions. So that is the gain the radiation less transitions will compete with the phosphorescence. But they are all the same type of phenomenon. Basically, in every place, if you notice, you are putting electronic energy, it is going into this small. This gap corresponds to vibrational energy. And this gap corresponds to electronic energy. So as you can see, this gap is so big, whereas this gap is small. So it is much easier for the molecule to convert the big energy into small, small energy and then give it away. It cannot give the 100 kilo calories to one another one. That it, if it gives, it is called as energy transfer. That is a different phenomenon. Okay? Okay. okay. These two are the same thing that I had before. So it depends upon how efficiently it will do. It depends upon the overlap of this one with the overlap of the corresponding uh, vibration level in the ground state. It will be a better overlap toward the end compared to the previous number. The most important thing is there is always a rule, principle, or law, okay, or postulate. This one is called as energy gap law. Energy gap law means energy gap and it is connected to something. Okay? So, the energy gap, that is delta E, the energy gap between the two states. Okay. So, the rate of this one is proportional to this scale E. This is number e to the power of alpha in delta E. Delta E is this gap. This one to this one is energy gap. And this one to this one is energy gap. So, tell me, which energy gap is larger between the two? Which one? This one or that one? This is number one, this is number two. Which one is larger? Number one. Number one is larger. So, the, what it tells you is, 
this gap law, the larger the gap, slower the rate of radiation, less transitions. So you can see the energy is in minus term. So in the power of minus. So delta if it is larger, this number will be small. So if this which if you use this law, energy gap law, which of these two will have a faster radiation less transition? This one or that one? But it is based on this law. Energy gap law for internal conversion, delta E is energy separation, the surface is involved in the diffusion, and the liquid is down to or C. And K I C is reliever all of this, which is one of my thoughts. So use that term. Which of these two will have a faster radiation less transition? Number one. Number one. Faster radiation less transition. Okay, you answered three questions right before. If you answer one question wrong, so we will subtract one, then you will have only two left. You can you can afford to make two more mistakes. Which one? The rate of this, how fast this is going to be able to come from here to here by radiation less transitions, it is controlled by this equation here. Okay. So the larger the gap, will it be slow? And between the two, this is a smaller gap, the larger gap. So which of the which one will be faster? Faster means whatever depends upon the gap. Is it this or is it this? Two. Two. Okay, so the, the gap is minus, so the smaller the gap, that will be faster. So if you have a 0, a swan, a 2, a 3, a 4, like that, so what happens is as you go up the number, then what happens is the radiation plus transition will get faster. Okay? So this is, well, this is a big difference. This is the energy gap for this is in 50 kilojoules. So you can see the rate of radiation less transition. Somebody has plotted this in the gap. So smaller the gap, the faster the rate. Larger the gap, slower the rate. So it is known. So if you have a zero, s one, a zero, s one, another molecule, this much, another molecule, that much. So this molecule, the rate will be slow. This molecule, rate will be uh, faster. So now the question is, which molecule will emit more? Which molecule will emit less? Okay. So this molecule, for example, the gap is smaller. That is one, maybe like 100 or something kilojoules. Okay. So that rate is this much, and this molecule, the gap is large, around 300 something. So this one is. Uh, much smaller than that one. Tell me which molecule will emit fluorescence more strongly. Is it this molecule or that molecule? This molecule let's call them as number one. This molecule is number two. Which of the two molecules will emit strongly? Number two. Number two will emit strongly. So this molecule has got the radiation less transition is a smaller number and this molecule radiation less transition is a larger number. So the radiative transition is competing with one guy who is running very slow, another guy is running very fast. The fast the guy, other guy runs faster means you know you are not getting that much emission. Okay. So that's why radiation less transition is very important to know. So what is controlling the radiation less transition? is basically the energy gap between the two states that are involved in the transition. If the gap is large, it will be slow. If the gap is closer, it will be faster. Okay. Here is another, you know, you can see there is a whole bunch of molecules here. From this here to that here. And the, the, this is basically inter-system crossing. All these things are radiation-less transitions. This is going from triplet back to the ground state. The triplet state coming to the ground state. The rate of radiation of transitions you can see here. 
this one is a frequency frequency is 1 over lambda okay so you can see in this end the rate is very very slow in this end it is much faster and how fast or slow it depends upon for example if you take the factor c it is faster but the gap is very small if you take naphthalene it is uh, uh, the gap is large and then it is uh, no, the is small so if you take naphthalene and factor c it is much easier to see phosphorescence from naphthalene whereas from factor c it is much harder because factor c is only this much naphthalene is that much so tetracine will have a harder time to convert. Tetracine will be easy to convert the electronic energy to vibrational energy. Naphthalene will have a hard time converting electronic into vibration and also it will have to convert it into light energy. Okay. And now this is a picture. T1 is 0. Okay. You remember the Kasha proof? Kasha is your friend, he was here. Kasha was not here, his student was here. Kasha through. If you tell me Kasha through, you will take a break. Okay. Tell me what is Kasha through. Lawrence says the curve occurs from S1 to S0. Perfect. Okay. So you got five questions right today. Only one question, wrong answer. So, uh, so Kasha's rule is basically if you have uh, S0, S1, S2, S3 like that, the em emission will always come only from S1. Okay, no S2, no S3. That is because usually the gap between S0 to S1 is much larger compared to S1 to S2 or S2 to S3. So the gaps, when it is sm smaller, the radiation of transition will be faster, so they will not emit. That is the basis of Kasha's rule. 